Hello and welcome back to another episode of, uh, I don't know where we are today actually. <laughs> I was going to say the disgruntled octopus, but he's actually just told me he's unionized. So uh, don't really know how that works considering he's the boss. So I didn't really think if you're the boss of the company or the world domination organization per se, that you can actually unionize, but <laughs> hey, you learn something new every day. Uh, so today we're actually going to do a bit of a hodgepodge episode. Um, I did have some uh, Reddit posts that I've captured over the last week uh, regarding a couple of questions a lot of things that probably horrified me to be honest um yeah but it's it's good yeah people should be asking questions and all these different things just a couple of the questions um i suppose geared towards what we've spoken about before regarding below standard um there's another one that will just blow your mind <laughs> like literally blow your mind so when we get to that can you please put in the comment section below if you believe this is actually well it's actually real because they've taken a copy of their their payout summary but do you think you would have been able to promote this high and i'll, I'll leave it at that because you know it'll probably give too much away but i was actually brutally honest to be shocked <laughs> i was surprised that um someone did this uh they did it and they you know tested the to the market i suppose and it sold but i'll leave it at that before we go into it i want to just touch base on um, a community post I put up yesterday regarding uh, the Lego instruction books I did. Everyone knows that the octopus hates building Lego, right? That's what Mrs. Octopus is for. That's what he keeps telling me. Um, <laughs> or otherwise, he'll just yeah, sell it in little poly bags like this. However, what I don't steer away from is instructions, right? So that instruction lot yesterday I picked up for $20. It was listed on Facebook Marketplace for free. Uh, the reason why I offered $20 for it is because he was quite... Um, like he was literally around the corner from where I work, uh, about 30 minutes away down south of Canberra. Uh, so what I did is I basically said, hey, look, you know, I really want these instructions. I'll swing you 20 bucks. I can pop around now. Because his initial message was, was like, whoever can get here first can have them. Uh, not, you're the only one at this stage, but, you know, really I'll take whoever can get them uh, straight off the bat. So like I said, swing in 20 bucks. Um, hoping to pull about... 500 to 750 dollars australian probably even more actually i've only been through there's two really big tubs like they're really big tubs i think in the states you call them totes i'm not too sure but i've probably been through this much of them and already pulled out instructions probably 400 dollars worth of the instructions um not going to sugarcoat things lego instructions are like skylanders and like everything else in the marketplace right like 99.9 percent .9 uh are virtually worthless uh, but what you want, really want to look out for is those really high end sets. I don't have anything organized, and I, I apologize in advance. I didn't think this through, but you've got things like the Lego Grand Carousel. So, brand new in box, I think it was going for about over three or four grand. Um, that's what punches the instructions up because what happens is people either have a like they have the set um, and they're actually just waiting to try and find the instructions to actually complete that set. They may have a box, they might do all these different things. So, when you have a complete set, obviously astronomically increases the prices, what you know, pretty much everything else is. Um, so for example, yeah, stuff like this, you know, this is probably from oh, looking at the graphics on the back, I'm gonna say 90s or 80s. Um, it really doesn't have a date on it, I wish it does, but so this is quite old. You can always tell by the numbering system up here. So Lego at the moment's got the five digit numbering system, you know, like Lego City, for example, starts with a or four i think don't quote me on that <laughs> it's been a while since i've built lego uh, realistically the themes have their uh their first letter uh, the first number of the theme uh will give you an idea of what it is so this one's a quite old uh lego set we'll just say 90s but someone correct me in the in the <laughs> in the section below and i will be able to check in a second so we will get closure uh so basically this instruction is in pretty good nick for its age so they're all the pages there and all those different things so what you want to do uh with instructions and i'll show you another couple while i'm here this is the one that i'm saying is big ticket item right so this is the grand carousel so this set goes for nominal amounts of money so the Lego number is Lego 10196. Type like that in eBay and it'll come straight up and give you an idea of how much these sets are going for. Uh, they did release a carousel set a couple of years ago under the creator line. Um, that, that in itself is probably about $800, $900 complete in box brand new. Uh, but the one that made this separate from that one there is this one actually had a music chip from memory. Um, and that's probably why it goes for so much money. But these instructions, I didn't even see these in the... I better take myself. <laughs> didn't see the instructions in the, in the photo. Um, I will probably put it up on the screen just to give you an idea of what I actually seen. Um, didn't see them in the instructions in the, in the photo. I only seen uh, a Star Wars UCS set, which is the Ultimate Collector Series. Uh, 
Um, these ones go for phenomenal amounts of money. So this is a yeah, this is pretty bad condition, probably like <laughs> push and fair to be honest. Uh, it's all there. It's all yeah, it's all a bit sad looking, but. This is what I actually seen in the photo. This is what made me jump on it. So this instruction probably, I'll probably list, well, if I don't break it, uh, for $75 to $100, um, including post, plus post. I really haven't checked it out, no, but I'll give you an idea in a second how to actually look for it. So the purpose, well, I'm on the channel, not the octopus, but I'm on the channel. <laughs> My purpose is to actually give you an idea of actually what to look for, not to actually brag. I don't have really don't see the point of that because you know all these different things i want to show you things that you actually have an opportunity to find i'm not going to find you these obscure things that only come past in one in three lifetimes or something like this like skylanders for example um you know they are quite bread and butter they're quite accessible yeah like i just sold another bunch then for for 50 dollars for for four skylanders right so and they're common ones like literally if you pick up a bag of skylanders from goodwill or from the op shops or thrift stores wherever you go you'll find those in there um they're that plentiful <laughs> so uh all those different things and i do want to talk about ebay as well so do remind me towards the end because i'll forget you know i've got problems so going back to how we actually look for these instructions and one day i'll be organized i promise uh back again <laughs> don't recommend they're, they're a pain in the ass to put together so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this website called bricklink and i'm pretty sure that if you're watching this you've all known about bricklink right so bricklink.com um so when i'm actually looking for for lego sets when i'm looking for all these different things i actually go to bricklink.com first it's like ebay for lego right it was actually bought out by lego the lego company a couple of years back and they've actually shut it down um because previously it was quite heavy uh you could do customizable bricks and all these different things as long as it was a genuine lego you could do anything to it and sell it on bricklink and since lego's taken over and i'm rambling and i apologize uh they're basically cut out so it's only generic bricks so if you own a bricklink store which you might hear people say it's actually they break they buy lego sets for example like 7740 um and they'll break it down to its base components they might break it down into like the little people um that red block there the black blocks you know whatever that is <laughs> uh, and they'll sell the instructions and they'll sell the the trains and oh, sorry the um the box and all those different things so what we're going to do now is we're going to quickly jump over to bricklink so this is what the website looks like right so this lego set came out in 1990 there you go and i'll actually tell you when the set came out uh the weight of the set which is not very heavy at 56 grams i don't believe that um and it will basically tell you how many pieces there are in it um, all these different things so these are the listings for sale oh no hang on sorry i apologize we're looking at the instructions so i will jump back uh hopefully it works <sighs> so where am i this is why I kind of nice things. So this is what happens when you look at Bricklink, right? So basically you type the Lego set in, which I have at the top, it breaks down every piece in that set. So if you're after, you know, building a Lego set or, you know, if you actually bought a Lego set um, and it's missing a couple of pieces and those couple of pieces will make it astronomically higher value because, you know, obviously when you put 100% complete, it's a lot better than putting 99.9% .9 complete. Um, yeah, you jump on here. The piece might cost you 10 cents, 20 cents, all the way up to hundreds of dollars, depending on what it is. Uh, that music brick, I dare say, is phenomenal amounts of money. And we'll check that out a bit later. Um, so go in there, look at the, the different things and all these different things. So what we're looking at for this, we're actually looking for the price of the instructions, right? So to buy this set secondhand, it starts at $482 in Amer uh, Australian, right? So it's written there uh, and underneath the instructions. So the instructions start at $6.00 uh 41 for use because there's no brand new ones so i'm just going to click on the instructions there and what happens now it actually brings them up and like i said our instructions here are quite decent i'll probably put them as you know i'm not going to say in the perfect condition but for their age they're probably very good condition um yeah and I'd, I'd probably put them as good we'll, we'll compromise uh so if you go down here you can actually look at the the listings and all these different things so that six dollar 41 it's only four middle pages so half the instructions are missing so these ones are really crap until um till we get to about here so use condition loose stable uh, loose staples i'll speak in a minute uh six out of ten conditions uh repaired cracks and all these different things so light folds tightly cover overall pretty good so i'll probably start this uh, this entry mark here, and this North Sydney Bricks people, they're actually in Australia, coincidentally enough, they're actually selling the, the instructions for $40 Australian, right? So that's a good, you know, a good thing for that. So 
you know, putting my eBay tax on it, I'll probably list that at forty nine ninety nine um, on eBay. So yeah, that's that's fifty bucks straight off the bat. So just quickly, I'm going to show you the grand carousel. Like, and I know I'm dragging on. I'm apologising. By all means, yeah, <laughs> you can skip ahead to the start. But what we do is we actually put the number at the top, so it's one oh one nine six, and this will give you an idea of how much it's going for on Bricklink, right? Um, so the actual set itself, brand new, is $2,300 Australian, almost $2,400. Or secondhand, it starts at $996, right? So that $1,000 secondhand, it may be missing pieces. It might be only 50% complete. It might be all those different things. But what I wanted to show you is actually the music block. And I'm probably going to make myself look like an idiot here. Um, parts... The reason why these sets go for so much money is actually because they they have parts around the exclusive to these sets. Um, I can't find it. We'll, we'll just ignore it, all right? <laughs> Pretend I didn't talk about it. So what we're going to do now, look at the instructions. Oops, this is where we can have nice things again. Uh, so we're going to do the used instructions start at $63, right? So the $63 one Australian is only for one book. Yeah, so we've got both books here. Um, so we're looking... $120. So we're getting up there, right? So book one, book two only, book one only. Uh, basically, the bare minimum for both books is $172 Australian. Uh, someone in Australia selling the books for $200, book one and complete somewhere to front and back, but in decent condition. I would say, with the exception, it looks like a little bit of water damage, maybe a bit of fold damage here. Um, they're in pretty decent condition, actually. So we're looking about... You know, books in two excellent condition, uh, nine out of ten, two hundred and forty dollars. So I'd probably go originally with that, you know, that two hundred dollars, two hundred and twenty five dollars with eBay tax on it. So these are the things, like I keep saying, is that you want to be mindful of. You know, just don't go to garage sales and say, "Hey, do you have any video games?" And I have watched so much YouTube content this weekend where they've done that, and it sent me crazy. So if you do that, put it in the comment section below and repent <laughs> because it literally sends me insane. I was watching Roman's videos this morning, and I love Roman. Any time picker, um, the octopus was on his channel a couple of weeks ago, so I got a, time, a bit of a week off. But like, you know, and I'm not sure how the, the, the thing played out, but he asked for video games and I always just cringe. But yeah, that's just me. Like, yeah, like you said, that everyone has to do with different things. But quickly closing out on the instructions. So it's probably a bad example, but stuff like Lego City, the newer stuff, this is the four digits. Um, I will find something in the five digits. Pet shop, that will probably go for a decent amount of money, but itself, probably about 50 bucks uh, for, if that's complete. Yeah, there's probably two booklets, three booklets. So, like I was saying before, is that you know, 102 is probably the creator line. Uh, we've got Technic sets in here. We've got this one, and I can guarantee this booklet will be not worth my time on listing. So, it's probably like 10 bucks reposted because it's a fairly brand new set. Uh, I remember selling this one in 2018, 2019. So, it's not, it's not well looked at, uh, not well sought after. So, like I said, the, a lot of these instructions, um, they are. There's the second pet shop book. And I'll promise I'll stop showing things. <laughs> oh, I entertain myself. Um, but yeah, little, it looks like a. Um, God knows what that set is. But yeah, Lego Agents. Um, I wouldn't list my time, waste my time listing that because, that, like I said, that again would probably you know ten dollars free posted, so you'd be losing money. Um, with the way I would send these instructions. So it would send them tracked, obviously, because of the price point. Uh, but if you look at those rigid cardboard uh, envelopes, that they're, they're, they're quite big. Um, you'd slide them in that, and I'd probably slide them into a satchel just to give them that water press, uh, waterproofness. Uh, for that's how I would send those, especially something when you know people are paying two hundred dollars for instructions, right? I want them to arrive better than when they left here. <laughs> and by the chance, they probably could. Yeah, obviously, with all these different things. So I think this little bit here uh, is probably from where the weight is because the, the tub's quite full and i estimated yesterday it's probably about 20 kilos of instructions in this book i actually weighed it this morning uh, and west broke the scars surprisingly so highly recommend don't jumping on the scales with you know 40 kilos of instructions that's one tub uh, <laughs> my poor car my also mrs octopus's poor car uh, it's brand new and it was struggling <laughs> to get it up the hill but anyway, what we're here for is we're actually going to start looking at uh, the Reddit post before I get rambly and go on too much from that perspective. So basically the first one, and I'll do it a little bit different today. I won't, you won't see my face now. So when I read them out, <laughs> you'll basically see it from up here. So this one, basically an eBay buyer wants to return 
an item after the windows closed. So realistically, uh, they basically, they said that they had free returns or some return postage um, capacity for 30 days. The, the T-shirt was set in excellent use condition. The buyers reached out 30 days after delivery. So that's the big thing here, right, is delivery. So your 30 days doesn't start from when you actually post the item. So, you know, if you send it on a Monday, then 30 days from then, too bad, so sad. It's actually 30 days from when the item was delivered. I don't know if many people know about that or they don't. I definitely don't hear about it much on, either, uh, on YouTube all that often, but that's something you need to be mindful of. So the, the bio basically said that, you know, typical thing for an INAD, right? So basically that the horrible conditions is oil stains and all these different things. Uh, the sellers, obviously, you can read it yourself. They've asked for pictures. They haven't responded, uh, showing no stains and requ requested a, a partial refund of $5, but would settle for $2.15, right? And this is a lot of obviously from America, right? Because we don't. <laughs> if someone asked me for a $2.50, partial refund, I'd probably laugh and, and, yeah, and not get all those different things. Um, so this person basically said, no, um, it's outside the return window, go away kind of thing. So this is a bit of an obscure one. Um, so credit card chargebacks can happen up to about six months after the transaction. So you need to be mindful of this. I'm not too sure how INADs um, handle. And I don't think they would be able to be activated because they're outside that 30-day window that eBay gives them to return the item. So if obviously they've reached out and hoped for the best and all those different things. There's a good chance that they probably made a stain themselves and you know basically wanted to get the money back and all those different things. So I would, in this situation, either A, ignore, which a lot of the comments said, um, or reach out to the buyer and said, hey, look, you know, thank you for letting me know. Uh, unfortunately, we're not, unable to do returns because it's outside the 30 year window and we're not doing any partial refunds because of this reason. Um, please let me know if I can assist further or even don't even write that. <laughs> Just go, shoo, shoo, off you go and see you later. Um, but by all means, put in the comment section below if what I'm saying is contrary to what you're saying or you agree with me or you don't agree with me and those damn dogs are back. <laughs> this is, they've been quiet all day and as soon as I start recording, they keep shooting off their mouth. Uh, so the next one, what we're looking at, uh, so basically this one to me, I always class it a bit as a, a bit of a, a scary situation. So basically this person, is uh, the seller's called Phoebe. Uh, so greetings, seller Phoebe. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what this buyer, what planet they're on, but they're delighted to exchange a five-star positive feedback with you. Can I assure you the positive feedback will be stellar, all these different things. So when I read this thing, and yeah, let me know if you think, I'm thinking of two things is that they're either a drop shipper, they want the item to be set in pristine, or they're a nightmare customer. So what I'm looking at from this perspective is I can't actually go, because no one's actually put you know, the username of the eBay thing. So I can't actually go stalking them and see what kind of buyer they are. But generally speaking, if I get these messages, I'll be overly nice. I'll reach out to them and say, hi, you know, whatever your name is, you know, Minion J, uh, thank you for your message. We're just letting you know that we're, we're preparing the postage now. We're doing the label up and, you know, we'll be happy to get it out tomorrow morning and hope you enjoy it. Something along that. And when they'll bounce back, they'll normally write back, oh, hi, Minion J, yeah, thank you for that. Um, I really look forward to receiving it. Thank you. And, yeah, then they're, they're good. They're just basically probably only overzealous in this buyer's note because they're probably excited, right? They probably haven't seen this item or they're just, happy to get it but on the flip side if they keep messaging me back <laughs> like to the point where they're becoming a bit of a pain uh, i'll probably get off the rule of two two goes then you, you kind of annoy me that to be on the block list uh if ever anyone knows my block list is quite high <laughs> so by all means reach out if you want me to give you my block list because it's done me some favors in the past it's so tom you know obviously uh mel back from burnett's uh other half we're basically merged our uh block list together so it, what you what you see of mine and they, they were equally this long uh so basically is now it's double as long um but like i said generally what happens when i message this person i'll get a gauge of how they how they react to me reaching out and telling them what the situation is if i'm sending something untracked to someone like this i'll actually go out of my pocket and pay for it right so i'll check their posting i'm oh, sorry i'll check their feedback first so what they've left for others if it's a c for red i'll be basically being overly nice and doing everything i can to show ebay because it's going to come to this right that i've done everything i can for this customer being polite i've upgraded their postage to from an untracked service to a track service um, because inadvertently the negative feedback is coming and 99.9 .9 times of the 10, it comes regardless of how nice you are to this person and, and how nice they are to you. Um, 
so basically that you can circumvent those different things. And a lot of those negative feedbacks for untracked items is that it never arrived, never arrived, never arrived. So you're better off just swinging that extra five or $10 to add tracking to that postage, um, just to basically give you, give you a peace of mind from that perspective. Uh, the next one, uh, if you if I accept a counter offer, is buyer not obligated? So this one's been going around a fair bit. And I've been watching a bit of crazy New York driver the other day, and I love him. <laughs> he's, he's he's more disgruntled than the octopus. Like yeah, if I ever gave up on the octopus, I could go work for him. So basically, this person's accepted counter offer, uh, but they don't see a pending payment. Is it just been over a day? So. The way it works in Australia is that there's no automatic payments come through for well, for a vast majority of people, and I will promise I can learn to speak one day. Um, in America, I know that there's like a little option. I know John and Josh um, were discussing on a podcast the other day that if it's got a different color background on the offer, it means it's a you know automatic payment as soon as you accept that offer. So you just need to be mindful of all these different things. So the way that eBay used to work, and you know, crazy New York drivers, you know, said otherwise in the the summer update. And I haven't checked it out myself, and I do want to talk about eBay, so don't let me forget. Is that con like, buyers are no longer contractually uh, like held to the to the thing, and they haven't been for a while, right? So realistically, the way that eBay works, if you select buy it now, and you click commit to buy, or you accept an offer, you're actually entering a legal binding contract, right? But the problem with the matter is, is that eBay doesn't enforce it from a buyer's perspective. So, you know, if I, you know, if I cancel the transaction, say, hey, look, you know, you know, um, someone else has offered me fifty dollars, and you know, I've had a list of a twenty, uh, I'm going to pull out of this sale. I'll get a defect, right? So basically, and you know, open myself up to negative feedback from a buyer perspective, uh, from, from the buyer's perspective. But if the buyer ghosts you for four days doesn't pay um you know <laughs> there's no consequence to ebay and as much as ebay keeps saying hey look you know we we are taking action against non-paying buyers they won't and i can tell you that they won't and yeah by all means you know there probably are exceptions to that you know where people are being aggressive or they're being you know demanding or they're actually being a general pain in the ass right they're probably would be very minute examples of that happening when ebay does can their account but like i'm saying is that it it will never eventuate, right? So what I normally do is, and I've said this numerous times in Facebook groups and all these different things, is actually go in there, check their feedback left for others, check the feedback left for them. Because as a seller, you can't leave negative feedback. And they, that went out, I'm going to say 2006, 2007, maybe a bit later. But I remember years ago that you could leave negative feedback for a, seller, for a buyer. Um, so there's no longer, there's really no consequence from a buyer is what I'm going to try to say. So what I normally do is I check their feedback and if there's a lot of, um, hey, look, you know, they never paid or they all those different things. You can tell because there's false negatives, right, or false positives. Um, I'll actually relist that item straight away. And a lot of people go, well, why do you do that? Because off, off chance that they buy it and they pay and all these different things, they're not going to pay. Like 99.7 9, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're not going to pay. And I can tell you this right away is that, I've had this happen numerous times. Um, like, like I said, that it's <laughs> I have the data to say that they're not going to pay. So, the, the me listing that item and you know selling it to someone else, there is little to no risk of that item selling from this initial offer, right? Um, but yeah, so hypothetically, if their feedback looks fine, I'll give them twenty four hours. I'll send them a um, payment reminder notice, which is through your your app don't send another invoice because the invoice will actually reset your four days right so you've got four days before you can actually cancel that order so what i do is i send a payment reminder uh, and then i'll give them another 12 hours i'll be a bit lenient so what happens after 12 hours they haven't acknowledged they might reach out and say hey look yet yeah, sorry i'll get paid tomorrow i'll pay tomorrow okay cool no worries i'll leave it at that if nothing heard after that payment reminder goes after 12 hours i actually relist that item then just let it sit for four day, for the remainder of the four days and cancel it and add them to the block list straight away. So that's what I'll do in that situation. So just be mindful of that. Um, don't do all those different things. And we've got another one now. Yep. Oh, that's the, the five-star one. Oh, we're actually getting towards the end. So this one... Okay, so this one, <laughs> so I lied. There was actually two that just blew my mind. Uh, so this one... Yeah, this one, I think I alluded to at the start with the, the uh, below standard, right? So this gentleman, or I assume it's a gentleman, sold an item for £180. They took $50 in pounds in fees, which was annoying apparently, but he accepted it. Good on him. Yeah, it's good to yeah get over your grievances. 
Uh, then due to not getting around to shipping the item, that's on me. Oh, well, it's good that he's actually had a bit of self-reflection in that sentence. The buyer requested a refund, which is understandable and accepted by eBay. So what we're looking at there before we get into the second sentence, and you know, you, you can't cheat, you can't look, you can't read ahead yet, right? So basically he was saying is that he sold an item for 180 pounds. They took 50 pounds in, in fees, which like he probably looks like he might have promoted it. I'm not sure that <laughs> he's probably promoted a fair bit, but yeah, you know, if we're rolling off about 15 or 20 percent, that's definitely not near 50 pounds in fees. Um, which was annoying, but I accepted it in the sense that this guy's got like he's just pretty much said to me in the first sentence, he's got no idea how eBay works, and this is how. I, I, I pretty much want to pro, um, protest across all the things. And I say this numerous times, is that before you start watching YouTubers like, on what to source, like pick your channels, um, all these different things, or you go into Facebook groups and all these different things, the two things that I reckon you should do is before you open up an eBay account, read all the policies, know them back to front. Um, reading the policies has helped me numerous times, especially with the, the customer support chat. Um, we, we do have the option of speaking to someone, but I prefer it as a chat. Um, by virtue of that, they'll actually email it to me. So if something, if they say, hey, look, we're going to remove this neutral feedback um, and they don't do it, I can bounce back on it. So, hey, look, you know, I spoke to this person. Here's the evidence. Fix it up. So do that as the first one. <clears throat> and the second one, learn how the postage system works. So basically get, you know, get an item that you rent from home, like, you know, this, this Pepsi can, for example, and how would you actually post this, right? So find a box, you know, you'll probably, if it's opened, I necessarily wouldn't put it in a padded bag. Because uh, you're going to get Pepsi everywhere and you're going to you know, basically crush the can. But you would put it in a box, you put some bubble wrap or some void fill around it and send it that way, right? So you need to learn your postage systems um, and how you're going to sell and how much it's going to cost to post and eBay policies before you do anything, before you even watch this channel. If you're watching now and you haven't done it before, go away. <laughs> Come back in a couple of weeks. So getting back to the next sentence. Uh, however, then eBay charged me £185. So not only am I losing money, but the eBay is also charging me for the full cost and more. This seems unreasonable to me. Is there anything in eBay policies where they state they'll do this? And look at that. Look, I didn't even read the rest of the sentence before I shot off my mouth. This is what happens when you ignore a case, right? And this is what we were talking about a couple of weeks ago regarding below standard. So when I fell below standard, it was because I refunded too many people. So I cancelled without, you know, with the stock not being in stock, whatever it is. So this person's not resolving um item not receive cases, which is worse, infinitely worse. <laughs> so you, yeah, if we're cancelling cases, you might have this much with uh, not getting back to item not received on item cases, they're like this, right? So there's really no standard for this. So what's happened here is eBay's actually refunded the buyer the complete 180 pounds because that's what the buyer's paid, right? If this person had said, look, yeah, look, I've been sitting on my ass doing nothing because I'm just jack <laughs> and I haven't sent the item. He would have got negative feedback, well, at least from me he would have, um, but then he would have basically, eBay would have refunded his £50 in fees if he had given the, the buyer a refund. So he would have, <clears throat> hypothetically, in this scenario, refunded £130, right? In this scenario, because he ignored it, um, he let it run past the four days or whatever eBay gives you from that perspective to, you know, to respond to these cases and resolve them. Um, he lost the full amount. So basically, not only did they refund 185 pounds, they hit him with the 50 pounds fee. So eBay won't respond to that. Customer service center, no, sorry, the customer service chat or person will probably tell him to piss off, quite rightfully so. Um, and he's basically looking at a de defect and negative feedback. So this person is kind of the person that we don't want on <laughs> on eBay per se, because it's actually giving our, our sellers a bad name. So before I run out of voice <clears throat> again, so we, this is the last one I want to bring up, right? So this one's the one that really shook, my, shook me to my core. So this person recently began selling on eBay. Surprise, surprise, they haven't read the, the policies and procedures. And by all means, please don't take me with being condescending, but I can't stress enough that the amount of YouTube videos that I see, they're all bubbly and smiling and happy you know, and, and floating around, you know, selling things and all these different things. But they're not telling you what you need to do from the start. Yeah, you know, by all means, yeah, you know, graduate to those channels and you know, fall in love with those people and you know the, the personas they're putting on and all these different things. But by all means, you need to look from the start. You need to look, you know, you're running a business, you're not running a beauty contest, you're not running you know, like you know, hugs and you know, giving away stuff for three. You need to look primarily you're running a business, right? And by all means, you know, YouTubers and Facebook groups and Reddit for that purpose, they're fantastic for providing, you know, background or they're providing um, assistance, you know, obviously take it 
on face value. Um, and also, you know, stuff like, yeah, advice or, you know, for example, Lego books, you know, like me showing you Lego books, you might be like, hey, well, I've got a whole bunch of Lego books in the cupboard. I'll see what I've got from that. And by all means, like, you can reach out to me for on Instagram and I'll, I'll tell you what you need to look for. But what's happened in this one, as you can see, um, she's recently sold a, a, a bag. <laughs> but I, I don't know how to pronounce it. We'll just say a Louis Vuitton bag, right, for $510. So her total earnings was $110. $110. So what's happened is she's basically um, – rec- she's new to selling. So what that little thing is on hold is at six seventy one seventy. dollars So – uh, so that's basically on hold because she's a new seller. Um, eBay will hold the things, dare say that she's being held for possibly being a new seller or the item's gone to verification like they have in the States um, before it releases all those different things. So her available funds are minus $815.67. Uh, she wants to know how she's in debt from selling. I'll give you a hint. She actually promoted the item at 100%. So (laughs) did you know you could do that? So not only is minimum 2%, the actual maximum is 100%. So under no, well, I won't say that. Um, So basically under no circumstance, promote your items 100%. I probably wouldn't even go past 10, 15% personally. But like I say, I'll do 15% for Skylanders because I I want to be known for the Skylander person, right? I want to obliterate the Skylander market so I can control it. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's a bit egotistical. Um, but basically, they've basically promoted 100%. They've wiped out the entirety of the price uh, and all these different things. And so what you could probably do from that perspective is that I would cancel the sale. Like in this situation, I would speak to eBay, um, cancel the sale, and you probably will get your fees back. I would speak to eBay before I actually you know, <laughs> cancel the sale. Realistically, if you continue with the sale, you're out the item and you're out yeah, possibly over a thousand dollars Australian. Uh, so you've actually paid someone a thousand dollars, or yes, yeah, seven hundred or six hundred and seventy-one American in this situation to take your high-end luxury handbag off you. So this is what, like I say, and I probably said this four thousand times before, is that going back to what I originally said, is that this is why you need to know the policies back to front. This is why you need to know exactly what you're doing before you jump on. Uh, by all means, that work out how the structure works, how all these different things, you know, get a basic understanding of how the policies and procedures work, move into Facebook groups, you know, have a chat to people, have a chat to different communities. I know there's some phenomenal ones out there and I know there's some less than phenomenal ones out there, Facebook groups. Uh, so just basically find someone where people want to help you. From all the posts I've got into to Reddit, everyone's been quite helpful, which I actually was surprised by because I always assumed Reddit was like a cesspit of humanity, but but maybe maybe Reddit's a good place to start. But this person's actually, um, like I said, she's actually <laughs> lost close to $1,000 in, in fees um, for selling her handbag. And quite quickly, before I go, I do want to show you something on eBay as well. And something that I found, uh, and I know a lot of people are discussing this, and I was listening to like Crazy New York Driver. Um, this counteracts a little bit of what I was speaking about last week in regards to um, yeah, making a business, you know, creating a structure for yourself and obviously filtering it back, you know, from my example, we Skylanders want to do shorts and do TikToks and all those different things, filtering it back to my store and going from that perspective. So when I list on behalf of the octopus, he makes me put a little octopus emoji at the end of the title, right? So that might not necessarily work too well being in a mobile app. So I will need to look at the mobile version just to see how that comes up and presents. It might be actually better to put the octopus at the start or you know, maybe halfway after a, a couple of keywords, for example, I'm not too sure, and I will play around with that. But what's happening now is I want to show you quickly, and I was listing a Lamax, <laughs> one of these earlier, I picked up off Facebook Marketplace at $25, $30. Um, so now we don't have the actual the business name. So previously, I would say the disgruntled octopus, 100% feedback, um, 14,000 sold or something along this. So that's what that 4.2K means. Um, it means how many items that store sold. So not only does it do that, it doesn't actually tell me where the item's located. So this six, uh, 2997 postage, see how it's italics there, italics um, and italics here. It, that means it's actually overseas. So this item here was probably in the States. Um, yeah, it's in Tennessee. Um, so that's something you need to be mindful of and that screen didn't come up. But but like I was saying is that it's really hard to have an identity now as an eBay seller um, to build your own community, build your own structure. So I know a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> excuse me, I was talking about building a Shopify store and building um, you know, a business from that perspective. 
and you know, just because of my recent health scares that, that has been pushed back by a little bit and by all means, I will get onto that. Don't worry about that. But this has actually amplified me a lot quicker to that stance, right? If I no longer own my eBay store or I'm no longer able to advertise my eBay store through looks, all those different things, um, you know, I've, I have great concerns with that, right? So basically I'm paying, you know, anything, I think $75 a month in subscription fees for the store um, to bring my fees down and all these different things. And, as you know, what's the purpose of having a store if I'm not able to be, you know, searched by that thing? Because, you know, people might go, hey, look, I'll, I'll like buying from the disgruntled Oxbus or, you know, quite like Kevin the Commonwealth Flip where he, he talks about, you know, buyer sales and uh, viewer sales and all these different things. If viewers can't find your eBay store, they're not going to buy from you. So by all means, keep an eye on his sales over the next probably next month or so whatever he's you know his current videos run out um, you might find that his viewer sales will start dropping from that perspective so i sincerely hope that ebay retract that and they go back to their previous one because it's complete dog's breakfast at the moment because if i'm looking for this lamax thing i could purposely i could accidentally buy it from the states and wondering why it's not here on time so it's not very easily communicated to a buyer because previously it used to say um from the united states it was overseas instead of that italics if you're an ad hoc buyer you won't know like this item is coming from the united states so just be very mindful from that perspective and i just want to look at something else quite quickly as well um i'll just go back to this little mac screen here um so before we go out this is the last thing i wanted to talk to you about anyway so under some stores here so where it says free postage here for example you might see in a bigger box stores you might say eb games which is gamestop in america and i have a little picture of the logo there and all these different things you've heard it here first what i think is going to happen is that ebay is going to charge the new promoter listing will actually have your store name here or your your store image there to basically identify you there so that's that's the next thing so obviously they've tapped everyone out for you know promoter listing so it might be a case of you're paying a dollar ten or two dollars twenty or whatever it is to have your little icon there and your store name there so that's what i dare say that ebay is playing with this game um but yeah but I, by all means let me know in the comments field below um what you think and if that's what you're thinking that ebay's doing <laughs> they're really squeezing sellers but i think i have persevered with enough right and i do think that i've been more than patient with ebay um like, you know, like I said, years ago, we used to have like eBay funded store coupons or, you know, site wide coupons where you would literally sell a thousand dollars worth of product at no ex extra expense to you. This is before promoter listing sold, rolled out. So you had really good things. Um, so, like I'm saying, is I'm probably looking at moving a majority, if not more, uh, sorry, a majority, if not all, uh, of my Skylanders across to a website just a shopify website i'll still continue on selling on ebay um what i've told before and a lot of people don't recommend doing this but you know if ebay is going to play silly buggers hey why can't we you know if you buy this lego instructions and i've got you know hundreds of these lego instructions it's going to put like a little pamphlet or a little business card in there saying hey look yeah you know, thank you for your purchase but did you know you can get 10 percent off if you go to octoskylanders.com.au or octoskylanders.com and all those different things so obviously redirecting the traffic over there i think that ebay is still good for in that respect um they probably don't condone that and by all means <laughs> don't tell them i've told you to say that but from my perspective whenever i've bought off big box retailers off ebay that's come with a lot of crap in the in the box as well so a lot of advertising pushing me back to their website all these different things so as far as i'm concerned if they're going to do it so am i um you know like like i said each to your own your, your risk tolerance uh you can go from that perspective but anyway um i will leave you alone and if you haven't already i would really appreciate if you you subscribe to the channel um you subscribe to grumpy Grenley's channel uh blake's channel i'll put them all in the, in the comments below uh but thank you again uh we'll see you next week maybe maybe you can get the octopus back next week he's actually like i said he's unionized and <laughs> i want to sit down with him and just tell him that i'm the one that's supposed to be unionizing um and see how that goes but anyway we'll uh We'll see you next time. Bye.